All right, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Nerdy Thirties, and we're glad you joined us again. As always, we're going to navigate you through the the seas of nerddom and geekdom, as we try to do every week. And uh, I'm your host, Jeff Griffith, joined as always by our other hosts, Jimmy Kelly. Hello, sir. And Matt Klein. Hey, 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 hey. And uh, in case you haven't heard or if you've been living under a rock or if you didn't watch any ESPN up to this point this week, uh, it's WrestleMania week. So it's always a big week for uh, the Nerdy 30s crew, wrestling fans around the world, and just uh, anyone that's, you know, has any interest in the wrestling business. So we're excited about that. So we'll definitely be delving into that this week as well as uh, Walking Dead and other such things. But before we dive into all of that fun stuff, we will find out and just touch bases with everyone. Matt, we'll start with you this week. What has been going on in the wild and wonderful world of Matt Klein? Oh, man, just hanging and banging, brother. <laughs> hanging and banging in the gym, man, with Hulk Hogan. You and Hulk Hogan, you've been watching some WrestleMania promos from the 80s. Man, me and the Hulkster, dude, we've been down at the shop making some T-shirts, brother. We've been... We've been film, recording some other podcasts, dude. That's about what we've been doing this week. <laughs> that wasn't Hulk Hogan making shirts with you, Matt. That was Jamie Marshall. I get them confused all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they are very similar. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, what about you? What have you been into, my brother? I've uh, been really busy trying to get the old, uh, working on the old YouTube channel this week. Spent what felt like, I don't know, maybe it was last week, but it felt like forever I spent on a certain podcast. It might have been last week, yeah. I've been complaining about it for two weeks. So it's enough. So it's okay. <laughs> but the fruits of the labor are there, because I'm telling you, people have been listening to that thing, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Watching a few movies, uh, watching some stuff on Netflix, and pretty much trying to finish up that, kids book of mine hopefully will be out uh into this week first and next week so that's very exciting that's very exciting and that's that, i mean i gotta ask because i mean i got to i got to kind of help be a little bit of an early proof here on that i suppose but uh i just like to you know tell everybody i think that's a, that's a pretty big deal man you wrote, you wrote an awesome kids book you need to at least kind of promo that a little bit man plug it well, I did write a kid's book. Uh, awesome will be up to <laughs> you should decide. I enjoy it. My son enjoys it. And uh, it's basically something that I wanted to do to leave just for something. You never know how long you're going to be here, man. And uh, so I'm writing a kid's book. Uh, it's going to be out electronically uh, here, like I said, end of this week versus uh, next week on Kindle Store. Uh, just follow the Nerdy 30s Facebook page, and I will post there when it uh, goes live. And actually, we're probably going to be out in print uh, end of uh, second quarter this year. So uh, pretty excited about having it to actually put in my hands and my son's hands. I think that's amazing, dude. <laughs> Very inspiring. And number two is written. I just have to work on it, so. There you go, man. There you go. Hey, can I tell you something? I, well, you know, you sent me the early thing to proofread, and I read mm-hmm. it to my wife, Melissa, as well, and she loved it too, man. Well, you know, like I said, I just uh, want to leave something for them to remember me by. It has my son and all my nieces and nephews' names in it, so it's kind of cool. Yeah, but, Absolutely. What have you been doing this week besides uh, attending the Bo James School of Professionalism? <laughs> oh, my sweet Jesus. Uh, so, yeah, that that made it, made it on the air this week, bro. Uh, listen, man, listen, I had not watched that show in forever due to certain circumstances that we've gone over before, but here right. I am. Turn that thing on. I'm like, all right, you know, I'm trying to get back into supporting WVCW. <laughs> And I'll just state it publicly. If if it's I'm getting work, it's going to be one of the worst things ever. Uh, but um, and the first thing I get is Mr. Bo James uh, trying to teach you about being professional. And I was like, here I go. 
getting miles and miles of material to use on Jeff in the first five minutes of WVCW. <laughs> well, well worth it. And then also a nice little main event. There was something in the middle. My computer jumped through the whole thing. I didn't get to see it. It looked like garbage. I'm not sure. Well, it's a shame if you skip that because you missed. Uh, I went back and watched it, and there was one of Matt Klein's uh, maybe most. One of my favorite uh, comedic moments from Matt Klein, and it was not even so much what he said, it was just the delivery. But uh, <laughs> in that match, it's a shame your computer skipped that. Ah, well, it just happened. Mm. But what else have you been up to, though, Jeff? Uh, well, yeah, me and Bo, we've been hanging mm. out. No, uh, not really a lot, man. We just been like like Matt said, we recorded a, a second Appalachian Paranormal podcast last night. Uh, watch the Mountaineer foot, uh, basketball. I wish it was Mountaineer football, but the basketball team looking good for all of you that listen, local West Virginia fans. Let's go Mountaineers. Uh, that's really about it, man. Played some. Actually, you know, I played a Friday night. Soup came over, a friend of the show, Soup, and we got a chance to play Star Round and Memoir 44. We played the introductory campaign on that, and both games were excellent. And I actually, I want to talk a little bit more if we get time about Star Realms. If not, I'll talk about it next week. But totally fell in love with Star Realms. So and other than that, man, that's been about it. All right, man. Well, let's, uh, you know, I think the big thing this Sunday, WrestleMania, nine ninety nine on the network. If you want to pay for it, I, of course, will not be paying for it because I do not have the network. But, uh, you know, the go-home show was done this Monday. Let's talk about that. I know uh, a lot of people were left unhappy, but let's kind of start with the good before we get to the bad. What was good, Jeff? Oh, well, if you're going to ask me what was good about the go-home show, uh, the first thing that pops in my mind was the beginning of the show. And we watched it again last night at Matt's house. And I, I will say I have not been on – I have not really been as excited as a lot of other people about this thing – Triple H match. I haven't been that excited about Sting coming back. I've just not really cared for some reason. But Monday night, they made me care. I'm completely invested now. They sold me on with that angle Monday night. I thought it was excellent. I thought Sting seemed like a larger-than-life hero babyface, and I thought Stephanie was perfect as a heel, as she always is. And I, just, I loved everything about that opening segment. It made me very excited for that match. Well, you know, me personally, I've... I've been excited for that ever since Sting came because I'm a huge Sting mark. He was, you know, the, the Stinger with the blue-green neon pants and the yellow scorpion on the side. That You know, that was like one of the first fan favorites that I really got into when I was young. And I've always liked Sting. You know, I've said before I'm scared to death that, you know, it's just going to be another person that Triple H has a job to him. But, that promo was so good. Uh, you know, just that whole thing between them was so good. Every There was nothing bad about it in my book. What about you, Matt? Oh, man, yeah. I've, I've been looking forward to this thing for a minute, pretty much like you since the beginning. I'm, I'm in a bit of a sting mark, not crazy sting mark, but I'm a kind of a wrestling history mark. History in general, really, but even with wrestling. And, you know, whether this ends up being good or bad, it's historic. But I think it's going to be good. I'm excited. And as far as Monday night, man, I love that. I thought it was everything that it needed to be. Like Jeff said, Sting looked like the mega awesome baby face that he should. And Seth and Triple H looked like the terrible dog heels that they should. It was, it was, it was excellent. Now, I know, oh. you know, Jeff, do you have anything else about that? No, I was just going to agree. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't going to interrupt. Hey, Bo James, talk to him. He'll tell you about not interrupting. Now, oh God! Now the next thing that me and Matt talked about today, Matt enjoyed the Rusev stuff. Uh, Matt, just fill everybody in on that because I think we consider that a good. Yeah, man, I'm really excited for that. Basically, the Rusev just beat the crap out of Cena, but it was awesome. I, so I uh, absolutely loved it too, man. Rusev quickly becoming one of my very favorite wrestlers in the world. I think it was great, but like I was telling Matt today, I, it's so much just to be, I'm worried, fed to Cena, which Cena doesn't need at all. No. I, 
that's the one match that I feel that I'm the most unsure about what's going to happen because I don't feel like that they're completely sold on the sacrifice and there's left to it. Um, they've spent a lot of time building him up with this, you know, undefeated streak. I don't know. I, I feel real unsure about that match. I'm not going to be super upset if Cena wins because I don't think it's going to hurt. Do you think it'll hurt Rusev that much? Maybe it will. I don't know. Do you think that it'll completely kill his character if he loses? I don't think it completely kills it, but I think it does lose a little bit of its shine in my book. And not because it, I know wrestling's not real, you know, as far as who's going to win. It's predetermined. It's real as in it hurts. We all obviously have saw that, unfortunately, too many ways this week. But um, it's still, you know, that character looks has looked so strong. He, I think he lost it. Did he lose a disqualification? That's pretty much all he's lost. He hasn't had a submission or a pinfall yet, correct? No. He's and not on the main roster. No. Ever since calling, being called up, he hasn't. And I will say this. With what they've done with that character, and you guys probably, you you might even remember me, I think, at a rumble. I don't know if that was at Mads or if it was your house because it was that far back. But I I didn't like the guy. I mean, I don't. There was nothing you could do that could get me interested in the guy. And they've done it now. I mean, they really, once they got tired of using Jack Swagger, even though they used him on Monday night, uh, I found the character completely interesting. Yeah, yeah. I I, I couldn't agree more, man. Uh, Did you see the promo video that they put out today of him working out preparing for WrestleMania? No, but I only hope it's just like Ivan Drago. I hope it shows him getting steroids and everything. Well, no, unfortunately, it's not that, but it's very cool. I'll, I'm actually, if I can find the link to it, I'll throw it up on the Facebook page. It's really cool. Um, I just, uh, I love that character so much, man. I, you know, I, I said this on Twitter one day, and I, I don't think I've said it on the show yet, so I want to get some knowledge out of it because it was a, a very true statement, and uh, I stand by it. If you are a wrestler that I feel like could have hung in the ring in all Japan pro wrestling in the early 90s, then you have a good chance at becoming one of my favorite wrestlers. And Rusev, to me, completely would have fit in in all Japan in the early 90s. He's he's a big guy that can work stiff. He's athletic. And I feel like, I don't feel like we saw the best of Rusev even. I feel like, I mean, you got to think this guy's still pretty young in the business. There's so much room for growth there. And I just I see him getting better every week, and I already like him. But I mean, I just see little things. I mean, I think I first started really noticing him, and it was of course it goes back to what I was saying. Some of the matches he had with Big E, because there's another big guy that's athletic and can work, and poor guy stuck in a horrible gimmick. But I love Big E too. But I mean, I don't know. That's when I first started really noticing Rusev, and ever since then, it's just grew and grew to the point where. He's one of the true highlights for me every week of uh, just any wrestling that he's on. Definitely something to look forward to. A high point. That's uh, two things we're looking forward to at WrestleMania right now. What else, Jeff? Was I want to throw another one out there that uh, we I don't even think Matt and me have talked about. I'm pretty sure we didn't. But uh, I thought that Bray Wyatt's promo Monday night was fantastic. I thought that it was the best Bray Wyatt promo in a while because it wasn't. it didn't. For the first time in a long time, he's always got the delivery. He's always got the, you know, crazy rambling. That's cool. But most of the time, a Bray Wyatt promo ends up feeling a little pointless because it's just crazy rambling. I feel like by giving him something that's really a focus with this, I don't know, to me, I felt like this was one of his better promos Monday night. Yeah, I I thought it was excellent. He's done a fantastic job of building this match completely by itself. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, that's a good point, Matt. I hadn't even thought of that. You're right. He has. It's been all him. It's <laughs> There's been no help from anywhere else. It's just 100% been him. You're right. I hadn't even thought of that, but you're 100% right. I mean, he, yeah. Good. He definitely talked you into that match all on your own. A match that truly I didn't know if I cared about that was first thrown about as a possible. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I want to see it now, and I hope that he wins. I think it's important that he wins. I do too. I really do. And Lord, it's a good thing Tony's not around to hear us saying that. I think he's in the chat room right now, so he just heard you. You're in trouble. Oh, no. Tony's already threatening to not watch that match with us when it happens because... If Taker loses, 
or take or loses, I think we'll have a giveaway of Tony's tears that are bottled. <laughs> I've heard that those are actually a component to a spell. If you have the if you have the tears of a Tony and you combine it with the right elements, you can actually cast a fireball. Wow. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I don't know if it's it makes, it makes sense for that, that <laughs> weird that weird Viking heritage. But uh I got to say a down point for me, and this might shock some people. I don't think it really should. And I'm not saying anything about the match quality. I'm sure the match will be awesome. But uh, I just feel like the build for this Intercontinental match has been, it's been borderline ridiculous. The whole steal in the Intercontinental title thing, I think has been stupid. I think it's made this angle feel way more comedy than it should have. Um, And I just wish I cared about it because it's, most of most of the guys in this match are guys I really like, and I just and this is the company's fault because they've made that belt such a bane to anyone that holds it. That I don't, I refuse to believe that any of these characters would legitimately want this title. That means nothing in the grand scheme of things. It's like it's, it's I know what they're trying to do, and they, I've I've heard this. 20 million times. Every time somebody new gets that belt, oh, well, this is going to be the start. We're really going to push this belt up. Well, I've heard it so many times now, but that don't mean nothing to me. And I don't know. I just feel like the company has killed that belt to the point that I don't know if it can ever be revived. It's going to take a Herculean task, in my opinion. So, And plus, I don't know. I just felt like I feel like the crowds have kind of picked up on that, too. Like the other night, I thought that that crowd was not as into a Daniel Bryan Dolph Ziggler match as I thought they would be. It was a pretty hot crowd the other night. I don't know. I just that's that's the one disappointment of this whole thing mm-hmm. for me. I I'm looking forward to the match. I think it'll be good. I I oddly enjoyed this comedic build, but I say that and I wish that it wasn't the caliber of wrestlers that are in it because to me most of the best wrestlers in the company are in this match. And what has turned into a comedy yet to a degree. But I mean, it's going to be. I, I think the match is going to be fun. I mean, speaking on the icy belt, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm with you completely. We've heard it so many times, and I hope it does happen. You know, the reports out there that the thing of putting, I guess, the U.S. on Cena and the IC on Debra. And, that's the rumor. Yeah, that's the the big if we rumor. Keep keep the main Brock, the main belt on Brock. You know, you don't have that in the picture as much. It could really be a good time to do that with those belts, but will they follow through? Uh, I don't have a lot of faith, so I don't know. But I, I think it'll be a fun match anyway. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, I guess the albatross in the room that we have not spoke about yet would be the final bill for the main event of WrestleMania play button. It's not WrestleMania 31. It's WrestleMania play button. <laughs> they don't like numbers. They don't like last names and they don't like numbers. But um, I'm sorry they don't like first names. But anyhow, they just, uh, I feel like the that, that, Finishing angle for the main event, just ridiculous, and I'm I'm embarrassed for them that they would put that out there. And I gotta wonder who thought that was a good idea, and what do you guys think? Well, I think probably before they all went out, Stephanie was in the back in the room with her daughters and saw them like grappling over a toy <laughs> and thought, hmm, let's use this to close the show. Yeah, and that's what happened. Well, that's the you know, only thing that makes sense. I agree. Yeah, Soup and I was talking yesterday online, and we decided that if you would have kept the cameras rolling for just a few more minutes, the next logical progression would have been they would have started flat fighting, then it would have turned into a hair pulling, then Roman would have ran out of the ring, so he said, I'm going to tell Mom, or he said, I'm going to tell Vince. Ran out, start cowering and crying in the last event, crying and snotting around. Then Brock runs to his room and says, Fine! Flames the door. Like, I mean, that was, that's probably what happened. That, that, that seemed like the logical progression. It, it could be, but it was it was horrible. It was absolutely just like, and it was good up until that point, especially until Roman came out. Yeah, I mean, promo was fine. It was really. I mean, I wouldn't say it's as good as the one in the past two weeks, but it was good. It was fine. I mean, you could have closed. Raw with that, but you know, like me and Matt said today, the same thing maybe should have been the close because that was probably the strongest thing. I agree. But hey, Jeff, there is somebody. I don't know if they're just listening or want to talk. Let's see if we can get them in here. And hello, are you there? As soon as I muted them, they hung up. So obviously they didn't want to talk. I think 
that it could possibly be one or two people. Vince McMahon? Okay. It could be Vince McMahon, or it could have been Bo James checking in to make sure you're doing a good job. Either way, they've left now. So either we've upset Vince that we didn't like his struggle for the belt, or your daddy Bo was so disappointed that he left because he didn't want to embarrass you on the show. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk. We, we talked about Raw and the build for WrestleMania, and uh, there's no, I'm telling nothing to do with Bo James, I promise you. But uh, uh, let's kind of just go over the card for a minute and just give our predictions on the matches. I mean, we've talked about the build, and uh, we'll just you know cover the key matches here and just say what you know basically what we. Think we need, we need to give our full predictions. Okay. So, start with number one. Have they announced a pre-match? They sure have, and it's last year's Andre the Giant Battle Royal winner defending his tag team title on a four-way match. Wow, those tag titles are absolutely meaningless. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, this guy won this Battle Royal and was all set to get the super push. Got put with Paul Heyman the next night on the biggest Raw of the year, and then he was just too swift. Honestly, not too sweet. It was too sweet. And who are they defending against? I'm sorry. Um, I, have, I have the full rundown of all the matches here. If you'd like me to get the yes. list, the pings in this one. Uh, Pre match is Tyson Kidd and Cesaro, your tag team champions, with Natalia as it's described, versus Los Matadors with El Torito, versus the New Day with Xavier Woods, versus the Usos with Naomi. That's a lot of oh. people. Wait, no, I thought it was... Did they, did they change it? Because on Monday night, they said it was the Ascension. Instead of the New Day, did the Ascension lose their spot in the match? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't even... Yeah, you're right. They did say that. This is on some Wikipedia, so it's very possible that it's wrong. It was the first place well, on the match. Though. It's also <laughs> very possible the Ascension just got fired on that way. <laughs> they gave uh, the New Day that spot. Well, you know, if they did, it only took them ever how many months to identify that that was a... Horrible 1980s angle. Yeah, yeah, it was really bad. Uh, maybe some, maybe something happened on SmackDown. I haven't read the spoilers at all. I bet it did, Matt. I haven't either. I, I bet 100% bet you're right. Sean it's, says that uh, they're still supposed to be in the Battle Royal, so who knows? Maybe they maybe they just like, well, everybody knows you're not going to win, so let's not put you in. <laughs> so, prediction? Uh, I'm going to go with less Matadors. Oh, are you serious? Uh, isn't it in L.A.? Yeah. Big, uh, uh, big Spanish population there. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to go with them, yeah. Interesting pick, but I can't say you're wrong. Uh, what about you, Jay? Okay. I'm going to say, I think they've got some faith in this Cesaro Kid team. I think they like the synergy that it provides having Natalia as part of the group with Total Divas. And I don't think they're ready to. Uh, Vince hasn't. I don't think Vince is quite ready to do his annual D push Cesaro yet, but he does once a year. So I feel like Cesaro and Kid will retain the belts and then probably lose them in three seconds the next night on Raw to uh, some team that just gets made up on the spot. Probably like El Torito and Hornswoggle. That'll be who they listen to the next night on Raw. So, wow. But it surprised you. Honestly, no. nothing surprises me with the WWE. Matt, what's your prediction? Um, and I think the chance retain as well. I don't know about getting beat by El Torito and Hornswoggle the next night. It's really help not. But uh, yeah, I'm predicting the Tyson Kidd and Cesaro come out of Victoria. And from the chat room, a Cesaro and Kid vote from the old Waldo. And okay. uh, he says he says next the next night they lose to Roman Reigns and his hair. I could believe that on the show. <laughs> that's, that's that's real possible. <laughs> hey, when you have when you have shampoo hair, you know that 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 hair would tell a thousand shampoo bottles. So man, you know what? It just when you said that, it just popped in my mind. I totally predict that Roman Reigns will be the guy that takes Troy Polamalu's spot on those shampoo commercials. He will be the next sponsor. That'd I could totally nice. see that commercial. Yeah, interesting to wait and see. Matt, what is up next on the card? Well, oh, next. Uh, it's not listed. I'll, I'll give uh, what I think will be next. Well, let's go with the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Maybe they'll open with that. I don't know, but we'll go with that. 
they'll probably open with the ladder match, but we're in the Battle Royal now. Okay. Jimmy, you pick first. Battle Royal. Um, since I haven't watched that much of the show and do not know everybody that's in there, I'm going to say probably Miz or Miz Dow, one of the two. I think that's a strong choice. I think those are both real strong possibilities. Because either, yeah. either Miz Dow is going to dump Miz or Miz is going to come from behind and do some kind of dirty thing to Miz Dow to try to get him more heat on him. Something along those lines. Jeff, who do you think? My surprise pick, okay? You got, this is a go with me here. My surprise pick, winning the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, Mighty Mouse himself, Adrian Neville. Wow, yeah, possible, I suppose. Yeah, they're doing a tournament over the weekend at Access, and the winner of the tournament gets to be in the Battle Royal. I predict Adrian Neville wins the tournament. I mean, he's been the one that's most heavily rumored to get called up to the main roster. Anyhow, I think he wins it. And what better way? I mean, we've been hearing for months now that they want to use the, uh, they call it the Mighty Mouse angle, but pretty much just the giant killer gimmick with him. Yeah. And what better way to, to kickstart that than him to enter the Battle Royal, the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, and win it. So I'm predicting Adrian Neville. Well, bold choice. I like that. Your choice, but man. You, Oh, man, I think honestly my, my number one choice is Damian Mizdow, as you said, but a close second. Uh, maybe this is more hoping, but I think that the big guy's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell you right now, if you're right and I'm wrong, I don't know that I could be more happy. I would love to see the big guy win. <laughs> so, <laughs> I hope you're right and I'm wrong. You know, uh from the uh, old Waldo in the chat room. He says Curtis Axel. Although I think the smartest thing they should do with him, just to do anything with him, is somehow he needs to not get eliminated and just uh, yeah. continue. I, I, I honestly think him winning it would completely kill any heat the character has at the moment. Yeah, he needs to, as like... As crazy as that sounds, he needs to lose to keep his heat. And yeah. not lose, though. He needs to somehow not be eliminated, yeah. but the thing go on. It really needs to be another another gimmick where he don't even make it into the ring. It does. In fact, does. I hope it's Ryback that takes it. Those are all good, good picks. I have a feeling one of the four of us will be right. I don't see anybody else winning it, but one of those four people. Go again there, Matty Boy. All right, we'll go with the ladder match for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. Uh, the champion Bad News Barrett versus R Truth versus Dean Ambrose versus Luke Harper versus Dolph Ziggler versus Stardust versus Daniel Bryan. I think with that many people in this, I think that we should have a our main pick and then our runner up. If it's not him, it'll be this guy. Yeah, so that's that's my gimmick. I get to do that. Nobody else does. <laughs> but go ahead, you first. Okay, my number one pick is. I mean, I feel like it's. The number one pick, Daniel Bryan, I feel like. My runner-up pick is a little bit of a surprise, maybe, but I don't know. I could see for some reason it happening, and I would be okay with it. Luke Harper. I think that could be like the woman that kind of give you a curveball, a surprise. I think they're real high on Luke Harper, actually. Uh, just got to figure out what to do with him. And the guy's capable of putting on phenomenal matches. He's proof of that. But I think it'll be Daniel Bryan. I mean, honestly, my pick's Daniel Bryan. Yeah. So, uh, what else? Did you say you were going to do a backup? No, I was not, yeah, I said, no, I said Daniel Bryan. It's not, it's not Daniel Bryan and Luke Harper. That was my uh, backup pick. What about okay. you, Matt? You're just saying. Uh, I'm with you on the top choice, Daniel Bryan. I mean, that makes the most sense, saying it's the most rumored dirt sheet-wise. But my second choice, just because, wouldn't surprise me, our truth comes out of there with the belt somehow. <laughs> I can see that, too, honestly. So, yeah, it, it really wouldn't surprise me. And then lose it the next night on Raw, of course. But Yeah, somebody's going to win a big match and lose the next night on Raw. I guarantee yeah. that. At least one. At least one occurrence of that. Yeah. Jimmy? Uh, my prediction for Luke Harper is I think he will be involved in the craziest spot of the night, him and Dean Ambrose. Probably. Uh, yeah. yeah. Go back as far as they can to the... Their old days. Uh, I think Daniel Bryan will win because I think it's going to be one of their uh, one of their happy moments. But okay. if not, I think it'll be Ziggler because I think that's the uh, 
the other guy, I think they fans will uh, accept the most. Oh, I, I well, interesting that none of us think Dean Ambrose is going to win this. And three months ago, Dean Ambrose was arguably the hottest character on the show. What has happened there? You know, oddly enough, me and Matt were talking about this earlier today, and you know, it's like. I was telling him at one time he was getting like almost Steve Austin like pops, yeah. and then they fed him to Bray Wyatt when he didn't need to be fed to Bray Wyatt. Yeah, I agree. So I mean, do you think there's any plans going forward to get him back up there again? I think they have no idea what to do with him because they don't see him on top, but they have no idea how to work. Basically, anybody. I mean, let's face it. Look at the whole WrestleMania card. They have no idea how to work any storyline in the mid card, really. No, no. They have zero clue how to use the mid card. I agree. That's, and that's the biggest problem with the company, honestly. Yes, it is. Uh, I think, too, and this is <laughs> this is Jeff's entire conspiracy theory, Jeff, coming through, but uh, I feel like it really upset certain people that he was getting a better reaction than his shield co-compatriot. He was getting the reaction that Roman was supposed to get, and they didn't like that because they didn't want to be wrong and they'd already made their choice. And I do feel like, to some degree, Dean got pulled off just so that it didn't make Roman look bad. You know, I have read a lot of podcasts. and I've read a lot of podcasts. Listen to a lot of podcasts. I've read a lot of interviews. Oh, no. Well, Bo James and I have talked to me a little bit there. Um <laughs> So many people, when you bring up people getting cooled off, or this, they, and it doesn't make sense why you cool anyone off because it only makes you more money. Right. I mean, it's cooling someone off only hurts Vince's pocketbook. Logically. I just, we're talking about I just a company think law. that doesn't do a lot of logical stuff. I just think that it was fan-generated, it was natural, and they do not know how really to deal with anything that's natural. I, I anything that's right. organic, they are lost because it's not in their storyline. They don't... Uh, I think it goes back to, you know, and again, I'm not a wrestler, but back in the old days, there was territories, and you had to, you know, everybody, they kind of, you know, they learned every night and they went off of every night what they were going and, you know, they understood organic and nobody understands organic. And Vince thinks that his ways are good and there's nobody out there that understands that I'll speak up. So we get what we get. We get Vince's storyline and that's it. I think you're right. And I mean, I think it's just such a corporate environment. And that's how corporations are. I mean, I know I've worked for big corporations before that they've got it one way and, like, they don't veer off the path. They don't – a machine that big doesn't understand intricacy always. And I think you're right, man. I think they just – they don't – they're not good at innovating. They're not innovating, but uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not good at rolling with the punches. They're not good at – improvising and yeah they just they, they have a set plan and they want to stick with it and anything that deviates that plan makes them very uncomfortable you know in the chat room right now uh you have two guys that are involved in the wrestling business and have been for a while you know i think they're summing it up perfectly you know and what they're saying, you know, bookers understand our organic and writers are writers. And, you know, they added writers have no place in wrestling. And I kind of have to agree. You know, mm-hmm. it, 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 it's not the old days when it was you just knew where you were from A to B and you figured the rest of it out as you went. Um, so, I mean, I think I you're agree. right. Got, that's a weird, interesting point to bring up that has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but it does. Remind me, after we talk about this, and just remind me, because I, I want to keep on the point of the track we're on, but just remind uh, me. That, that school, that Bo James school is already paying off. So, uh, Matt, what do you think? Man, I mean, yeah, the, like I said, the whole problem is, or at least most of the problem is, the 
the writing and the direction everything goes, and especially with the mid card because there's nothing there and they can't get on anything or stick with anything there. And if something gets hot or gets over or whatever you want to say, they seem like immediately cool it down almost almost anything unless it is a hand-picked number of people. And I, I mean, I don't know, we're not there, but it's not that hard to see what goes on either. It's like the talking about Ambrose and, you know, Jimmy said we were talking about today. I really feel like the potential was there to be, you know, on uh, in a number of years an awesome level. You know, you put work that character that he's been working right on. The people were loving him, but that got caught off immediately. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, conspiracy-wise, they've talked about them probably not liking that he was getting over more than Roman. And yeah, that's probably true to a degree just because that seems to be, you know, how they run things. And the sad part is, and we've talked about this before, most of us, not all, uh, Jimmy an exception, and there's others, but most of us will continue to watch, no matter what it is. So I, I don't know that the change will ever occur for the better. I mean, there'll be spurts of better, but essentially until something major happens, it's going to be a lot the same. So... Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, that's depressing. Let's keep moving on till we get to the big depressing. What else, <laughs> Matt, is on the card? Oh, well, let's uh, keep on the whole happy trail here. Next up, we'll go with uh, AJ Lee and Paige versus the Bella Twins. I like that you use happy trail with them. Uh, <laughs> huh. I'm sure there's no happy trail. Ain't nothing there on none of them. Ain't a, ain't a hair on them at all. I agree. Uh, Jeff, that was, oh. you just, that was, you took it the wrong way, Jeff. Completely, but go ahead. Nah, I think it's the right way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I don't, it doesn't even matter. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, I feel like it's so interchangeable with any of this. I guess I'll say Paige and AJ. Okay. Uh, Matt? Um, I don't know. It don't matter, really. I'll say the Bella Twins. I'm kind of like Matt. I'm going to say Bellas. But, you know... Here's one thing I will. I feel like I need to warn the WWE about. Do not have this match on before Brock and Roman. Because unless Brock comes out and just starts whipping reins everywhere, you're going to go from dead to a crowd going blah, and crapping all over something if Reigns is getting a lot of offense. Yeah. And this could absolutely kill the end of the show if that's the end of the show. That's just my opinion. Because God loves the Bellas. Uh, Paige can't make... I mean, I've watched it. It's just it's hard. They're trying, but it's just hard to get into. You know, I, I feel like... I think it may have been Matt that said this the other day, too. I can't remember for sure. But I almost feel like the Bellas have gotten worse. Like they got better for a little bit, but it seems like they've gotten like like worse lately. To me. Yeah, I, I agree. Especially, I, I think Bree for a period was looking a lot better, and that's kind of went completely away. I don't know. It's time to call up some divas. I mean, I would love to see the uh, the divas division get. You know, the respect that I feel like it could get, but it's not going to happen with most of the main roster that's up there. You've got two, maybe three active members of the Divas roster that I feel are ready to go out and put on the matches that they need to put on. Yeah, they're not, not going to let the Divas division happen and be good anyway, so if they get caught up, they just get lost in the shuffle. It's just, it makes me depressed because it seems like, to me, I, you could make an argument that the last three NXT specials, the Divas match was 
you can make an argument for either of those three being the match of the night. I feel like absolutely. Well, here's and, here's my opinion, and this is just what I I believe here. Until the Divas show is off of E, that women's division is going to revolve around the Bellas because that show revolves around the Bellas basically. Yeah. So. The next girls need to stay in next until all that's over, in my opinion. You might be right, man. I mean, I love Emma to death, but she got called up, and, which I feel like Emma, too. Well, I don't know what really happened with that whole stealing the iPod, iPad cover thing, but I feel like that really killed any potential momentum she had. And she never really recovered from that. And, you know, there's a spot for her, just like there's a spot for Santino, you know? Yeah. It could be a huge spot for her. I mean... I mean, people can argue all day about Santino and what he was worth. I can tell you right now, Santino was an attribute to that show. When you've got somebody that is good at comedy, it's good to have those spots. I agree. Every show I've ever been to that he's on, one of the top three pops of the night. Mm-hmm. And, you know, no doubt. I mean, people just like him. So. And I, I, I dare anybody that's listening that was watching it to say that they did not get excited at the Rumble that year when it looked like Santino had won. You know, the, uh, the, the chat room there is saying that... Uh, Every place needs a stooge. I think maybe next week we need to try to figure out who the uh, WVCW stooge is. <laughs> we know who the can... we know who the we know who the commentator who the stooge is in the commentator booth, according to Bo James. Hey, you don't need to talk to Willie Blackheart like that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, anyway, let's let's move on. We've got ten minutes left, roughly. Uh, next match, match. All right, next up, um, uh, United States Championship match, champion Rusa with Lana versus John Cena. Jeff? I'll go ahead and call it. I think Lana turns on Rusa to help and John Cena wins. Um. I haven't been watching, so that makes absolutely no sense to me right now. But, um, I mean, I know she wasn't on this past week or the week before. I remember not seeing her come out and seeing some guy with a really bad Russian accent come out. <laughs> it was so bad, it was good. He, he should have gone to the Nikita Golov school. Don't know. I want that guy to become a permanent part of the Rusev Act, I'm telling you. He was so bad, it was good. How is Nikita Koloff not involved in this angle? You know, uh, you know, I don't know. It seems like maybe it be it'll awful. probably wait until they're going to turn Rusev to a face, and then it'll all be some big angle with Nikita training him. Call him safe. Matt, who do you think? I, I'm I'm saying Rusev, but go ahead. Uh, I think Cena's going to go. I think Cena gets to. All right. So you think you're thinking that. What's next, Matt? Uh, next, uh, so we'll go with. I don't have the play as far as match order on the actual car, but we'll do Undertaker and Bray Wyatt. On that one, I'm predicting Bray. Uh, I am gonna say I really hope it's Bray. Uh, I'm going to say Undertaker, though, because I don't see them. Of course, I didn't see them losing the Brock, but I don't see them doing two in a row. So. Unless next year in Texas, if it's his last year, um, wouldn't the storyline be better that he's lost the last two? Kind of come back as the, uh, you know his chance to go out on top? Could be. Could be. Matt, what do you think? Uh, I think Bray goes over. I really do. So we're uh, two Brays and one Undertaker. So, 
All right. Uh, next, Matt. Next up, you have Sting versus Triple H. I'm, I'm going to go with Sting. I'm going with Sting, even though I'm so scared to death it's going to be Triple H. I'm going with Sting. Uh, I mean, surely they're not that dumb. i got to say Sting. I mean, I think it would be ridiculous to bring Sting in after all these years. But this, but it's always, any time that I say with this company, it would be ridiculous to do that. Usually means that's what they will do. So, hey, um, it was also ridiculous to bring in Kevin Nash to face the mm-hmm. punk. So that's what I'm saying. If you if you if you think about it, and you think, oh, there's no way they're, they'd do that. It's too ridiculous. That usually means that's exactly what they are going to do because it's, they don't do a lot that makes sense. So yeah, but no, I, I'm going to face Sting in good faith. Yeah, Matt. Yeah, I'm going to say the vigilante Sting. I don't want to say it right. Is that another strike against us in the uh, Bo James school? Absolutely. Uh, He's going to kind of talk to you guys if he ever sees you again. Uh, And um, my only question with this one is, you know, is Tony Schiavone the one play-by-play or color? Or is there such (laughs) thing as play-by-play anymore? Next I know we haven't got to Randy Orton and uh, Seth Rollins, correct? Aren't they on the show? Yes, they are. No. I am going with Orton because I just I, I think that's they, you know they're gonna they're gonna have Orton win and hopefully if Reigns wins, which we haven't got to yet, Rollins cashes in Monday night or same night. But go ahead, Jeff. I'm going to say Orton just because I think they believe, I feel like it's always been like this. They think that 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 case, if you have the briefcase, that makes you bulletproof and that it's okay for you to take losses. That's just always been like how they booked it. And I think, yeah, I think think it's actually, I really genuinely feel that Orton and Seth could end up being the match of the night in ring as far as mic work. I'm not my first ring work. I but, um, that. I think it's going to steal the show. Yeah. I, I, I think Seth's going to look like an absolute superstar. And I think uh, Orton will hit him with an RKO out of nowhere at some crazy, you know, some kind of crazy RKO spot and get the surprise, not surprise, but, you know, just a quick win. Not quick. You get what I'm saying. Regardless, uh-huh. I'm, I'm going with Orton. And Seth Rollins has the case, so... In their minds, he doesn't lose anything by losing. All right, down to seven minutes. All we have left is the main, correct? Yes, but I, I'm, I have run that match. I'm going with Seth Rollins. I'm opposite of you guys. I think they're going to put Seth over. Am I? Oh, oh Matt, going with a little something different there. Uh, I think it'll be some kind of uh, crap finish, and we'll see this match again next month at Extreme Rules. Uh, Chances are we're going to see every one of these matches again next month with Extreme Rules. It seems like that's always the WrestleMania rematch pay per view. Yep. But yeah, main event time, boys. Uh, Champion I knew this was coming. Paul Heyman versus Roman Reigns. I knew this was coming. I knew we were going to have to talk about it. Uh. Well, I guess we should also note, I mean, I don't know if we spoke about it or not, but it, you know, for those of you that maybe haven't heard, Brock did officially announce that he did re-sign, not resign, but re-signed with the <laughs> WWE. And so we we do know that's a factor in this. I am going to say, because of the fact that he re-signed, I think Brock Lesnar wins and keeps his belt and holds on to it until next WrestleMania. Wow, that's, uh, you know, uh, one thing I would say there, if you do that, I guess that means Seth never cashes in. and. Uh, no, I think he cashes in. I just don't think he beats him. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, I think Brock's going to lose. I think it's going to be Heyman turning on him because I think it's a natural thing to do with Reigns right now. 
he's getting so many boos, why not put him with Paul and, and, and go that way with it? Although, does that hurt Brock? That's a whole other thing. I don't know if one loss hurts Brock. At the same time, I don't like it. That's just my opinion. So I'm going with Reigns. Oh, man. I'll, I'll probably change on this again before Sunday, but at the moment, I think I would have said it differently yesterday, but I think Roman Reigns is over. Uh, very possible the scenario you speak of, Jimmy. I think if he does, it'll be some finish that don't, I mean, make Brock look crazy weak or whatever somehow. I don't know, but at the moment, I feel like Reigns. And I thought, uh, another thing that I gave thought too, and I saw... Uh, a watch in the chat room talking about it, uh, flipping the chase around, have Brock chasing for the belt, maybe get the back of SummerSlam, still has it for Mania next year to do something big with. So, yeah, I, I thought that scenario over as well. I kind of think Reigns is. So, when it's all said and done, Jeff, on a A to F report card, where do you think WrestleMania is going to fall this year? Um... Man, yeah, I don't think it goes higher than a C. You know, actually, that is kind of exactly what I was feeling. What about you, Matt? I think it'll be a solid B. I really do. I think there'll be enough. Uh, there'll be some stuff that's disappointing, I'm sure, but I think there'll be. I think there'll be enough good to to be a B. I really do. So, Matt is the most optimistic of the group here as we go into uh, to WrestleMania weekend. Uh, just real quick, how do you feel about the Hall of Fame? Do you think it's going to be a lot of fun, Jeff? I think this is a weird Hall of Fame this year. I think just, uh, I don't know, it doesn't, I, I don't see that one big emotional hook interview. I think the best the best uh, presentation will probably be the Daniel Bryan presenting to Connor, the Crusher, honestly. That's going to be tough to watch. That yeah. will might be a, a a a room full of grown men crying at some point Saturday that, night. That, that'll change the mood of the camp right there. <laughs> yeah, it really will. The mood of the camp will be so different. Melancholy, uh, even. I agree. That will kill it. But, you know, I guess... Um, I'm interested to see if uh, Medusa takes a chance to take a shot. I doubt she will because nobody ever really has the balls to really take a shot. You know, uh-huh. the the saddest part of all is that they waited so long for this that Macho Man isn't here to accept his own Hall of Fame introduction. That's the saddest part of this year to me. I agree, man. I agree. I think that's why I'm... It's like I'm excited that Macho is finally going in, but at the uh, at the same time, man, it just like kind of bums me out because of the circumstances and because he's not here to get it. So I think that's maybe why I'm a little down on the Hall of Fame, even though I'm I'm happy he's going in, but I'm just bummed that he wasn't here to get it. I'm with you. Uh, and one minute to go, Jeff. Oh what? man, with one minute. I mean, we haven't got a lot of time to talk about, but there is one thing I want to bring up real quick. I mean, we didn't mention it, but uh, a real tragedy Saturday happened in uh, Mexico with Pero Aguayo, and uh, I just, uh, you know, we I guess just for, on behalf of all of us, just you know, into the wrestling community, just send out our condolences. I mean, what a tragedy! You know, that's one thing, Jeff. Every time those guys step in the ring. They're taking a chance, and it's not a chance that people need to say we need to stop wrestling for, or, you know, it's just it shouldn't be happening because accidents happen everywhere you go. You can be riding down the road and die riding your bicycle. I know one of my good friends died that way. But, you know, these guys, they go in the ring, and they take chances sometimes but maybe they shouldn't, although there was nothing involved there. But if you saw the big cut this week on another story, 
That was another bad thing. They do all that. Yeah, Yeah. they do all that to entertain us, and you know they at least should get our respect for that, and they get my respect. At least most of them do. Some of them I just don't like. Mainly, just a few. But just remember that they're taking, you know, they're taking chances to entertain you, so we owe them our respect. Absolutely, and you know, like you said. I mean, I think I've probably watched that from every angle that's on the internet at this point. And the bottom line is there was nothing there. There was what we would consider an extreme move. There was nothing there that was anything much more than basic, you know, wrestling stuff. Nothing there that you would ever look at and think, oh, that, he's going to kill that guy. N- at all. And it's just, I mean, just a freak accident. And it's, I don't know. It's just, it's just it's really depressing, honestly. It's it's really kind of stuck with me all week, and I I think really kind of casts a little bit of a dark shadow over what's usually one of the biggest wrestling weeks of the year. I think it's impossible to think about wrestling and not have parallels lie on your head at this point. You know, uh, and I hate to say this this way. But it's a very good thing that it happened in Mexico as opposed to the United States in a larger promotion, not even WWE. But I can only imagine what people would be calling for if that something as simple as that happened here in the United States right now. Even though, I mean, worse things happen in football and more often. So. Yeah, absolutely. But on, on on the bright note, WrestleMania this weekend, Hall of Fame Saturday. Matt, take us out for the evening. All right, boys and girls, it's been real. It's been fun. It's WrestleMania week, so go have some fun this weekend. We know we're going to. And with that being said, I'll speak for myself, Matt Klein, my co-host Jeff Griffith, and Jimmy Kelly, and all of us are the Nerdy Thirties. Come back and listen again. We hope you have fun. You have yourself a Great WrestleMania week.